NFL Week 15 previews. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books down there. You can go check out all of them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you were on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for us. It's youtube.com slash winningcureseverything. Uh, let's jump into it, man. We, we got five of the – so our five biggest games, and then we've got our honorable mentions. All right. Let's start off let's, Chargers let's go. Chargers at the Chiefs. Thursday night football, baby. Chiefs, a three-and-a-half point favorite, 7.20 p.m. Thursday on Fox. It is the last Fox Thursday night game. It's at Arrowhead. 80% chance of rain. First off, let's let's say this. Fox paid $700 million for the rights to Thursday Night Football, and everybody was like, they are crazy. These games have been terrible. You know what? That was just all scheduling. That was because, 100% scheduling. Because this season, Thursday Night Games have Thursday been Thursday Night Games have been great. Incredible. All of a sudden now, everybody, everybody used to blame Thursday. All oh, the players aren't ready. They don't have enough time to prepare. That's why these games are bad. You know what? Maybe it's just that we just had a bunch of crappy teams playing one another. I'm going to go with that one. Because when we have good teams play each other, they're really fun games. Yeah, Chargers at the Chiefs. I mean, we like we had Monday night football games this year that were actually fun. Yeah, no, this primetime you know, TV. Chiefs and Rams. Like, Sunday night, Monday night, and Thursday night have done well. Ratings, yeah. gold. They're cash and checks. Yeah, absolutely. Um this is an incredible game. This is, I mean, this is a big game. This swings a lot of different things. Mahomes is the MVP favorite right now. He's like minus 150 at most uh, sports books. Um, you know, the Chiefs, they could wrap up like a number one seed. Oh, yeah. If the Chiefs win, they're going to be number one throughout. And if the Chiefs lose. The Chargers have a chance at number one throughout. And, and Phillip Rivers, Phillip Rivers could, could take could, the MVP away could, from Mahomes. Could take over the MVP. Like this is a this is as high stakes a game. So like Rams Chiefs was a lot of fun, but there wasn't a whole lot at stake no, because, because they're in were different divisions. We just whatever. thought maybe this was a precursor to to a playoffs. I mean, this borderline is a playoff game. Yeah, this, it's not a playoff game because as in the losers done, but the the outcome of this game matters so much in this division. Who gets home field? Who wins the division? Yeah, I mean it's in and. and MVP stuff. I mean, yeah. it's a big deal. It's a, it's a humongous game. Um, I think this is in both of our gambling picks. It is. Go watch the gambling segment. We'll we'll break that down even more. But just know this is if you're at home on Thursday night, you need to be watching this game. Period. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if okay. you're not at home on Thursday night, cancel your plans. Go cancel home and watch plans. this damn game. Go home and watch or go to a sports bar. Go to your sports book. Go to Tunica. Watch the game. Put some action down. Uh, and go watch our our gambling picks episode let's do that and if Come you're on. listening on the podcast that's coming up next uh game number two patriots minus one and a half at the steelers this still isn't on the board at a lot of places uh the majority of the places out in vegas and whatnot do have it up patriots minus one and a half um i would imagine that line's probably going to crawl up like this is one of the spots that the the patriots always seem to you know it's sunday 3 25 p.m on cbs so everybody will be watching that's right Everybody in this their mother will of the watch week. it. Um, Big Ben, it's he's questionable or he's probable or whatever. Like it, he's going to play. Like you know he's going to play. Uh, James Conner, questionable. I don't. Now, feel I don't as know good about, about him. that. I don't know about him. So we'll we'll see what happens with being him. a being a football fan. I'd like to see him play because I want this to be a good game. Yeah, you just be, want it to be fun. Being a Pats fan, I don't want to see James Conner because we can't stop anybody that has lateral speed. And that guy can go left and right just as fast as he can go north and south. Yep. And and that's what kills the Patriots. Uh, this would be an opportune time for the Steelers to uh, – Finally show up and play good. To, to, to show up for a ball game. They were 6-2-1, and one, and well, we they, thought – They were 7-2-1 and one after they beat the Jags. 6-2-1, no, and one, and we thought – Man, this team might be the best team in the AFC. They just yeah. hadn't played the Chiefs yet. And no, they they did. They they lost them in week two. Remember? Oh, that was in week two. Yeah. That's right. So, but they that they had started playing like the best team in the. That's right. Because they, the they had tied and then they lost. And I remember that now. Yeah. Was they we we thought man the Steelers are right, and then they win at the Jags, but it's garbage. Yeah. And then they then they so roll seven off two and one three and three L's in a row three L's in a row and they got the Patriots and one of them to the. 
damn and, and, Raiders. And at the Saints next week. Yeah, it's going to be so. Cool. Because Saints are still playing to keep lock lock up home field advantage. They've got yes. the tiebreaker over the Rams, but the Rams are, are not looking to be slowing down. If the Saints slip up this much, yeah, they lose you, home Saints field. Saints lose one game and and they lose home field. That's right. Uh, and and you don't want to have to go out to L.A. You'd rather no. just stay you at home. Wanna, it's not that L.A. is such a hard place to play. The Dome is so hard to play. You yeah. want them coming there. Yes. Agreed. Uh so, you know, Steelers, like, uh, there's nothing that tells me that they've even got a shot in this game. Like, uh, If I was a fan, I'd feel that way because then if they play well, you feel good. Being somebody, being a Steelers fan, that is. Well, looking at the Steelers' history against the Patriots, because the Patriots always show up for this game. Oh, that's right. The Patriots coming off of a loss. They're going to be fired up. Uh, it, that's, it always happens So like the this. things that scare me being the Pats guy, Antonio Brown, we have no answer for whatsoever. And Juju Smith, we have no answer for whatsoever. And offensively, I don't know who is healthy and who is not. And and that's what worries me about the Pats. Now, with that being said, the national sports writer fan, Bill Simmons, that is the, the kind of resident Patriots fan that speaks for the collective most of us, most Patriot fans are not worried about this game in the least solely because – if there is one team the Patriots just own, it is the Steelers. Exactly. I mean, you can talk about it being the Jets or the Bills. Those teams are bad. Out of all the, the good Steelers teams. The Steelers are always good, the, generally. The Patriots just absolutely are living rent-free inside of Tomlin's head. Yeah. I mean, he just it, – it, he's – I think Tomlin is a fine coach. I think he's a fine I, – I, I will agree with that. But I also think that Belichick can coach circles around him. It's no, no, yeah, no. The, we're not, we're not so, having the same discussion. He's a fine coach. The other guy's a genius and a, an exceptional coach. And Ben's a fine quarterback. The other guy's an they, exceptional they, quarterback. Yeah, well, they they know. So the Patriots, even when they're not great on defense, well, they can score a lot against the Steelers. They they find ways to to shut down Roethlisberger. I don't know how either. I really don't know how the Patriots have been bad at defense for a while. And, and they I, still do. I, I don't know how they shut Ben down. Because even when Ben looks bad, they still score like 28 points. They just look – he just makes a lot of mistakes. Yeah. I Look, I hope it continues. I hope the trend continues. Because um, the Pats, they got four losses. I, I there's hope a legit, it doesn't. There's but... a legit chance the Patriots could finish the four seed. I mean, it's – I mean that that is out there that they're playing it's not possible. just on Wild Card Sunday, but they're they're on the road the whole playoffs through if they have a chance to win at all, other than Wild Card Weekend. Yeah, I mean, and, and point, I don't like, want to play the Chargers or the Chiefs in round one. God, that'd like, be awful. You it? you I would I I would do anything I would have to do to not have the four seed in the <laughs> AFC. <laughs> I don't think you got to worry about that. You got the uh, tiebreaker over the Texans, so y- you should I mean, be fine. Texas could finish with twelve wins. They're not going to win. They're not winning out. There's no way. Like I didn't think they'd run off six in a row, eight in a row, nine who in a does, row. Who do the Texans have? They left? ran off nine in a row. I know that. I I got that. But hold on. I, so I'm pulling this up right now because I got to find out. Texans got the Jets this weekend. So tell me that's not a W. Well, I mean that's okay. So they got a shot there. All right, <laughs> they got a shot. They I got a shot. You never it. know what the you're making Jets. me feel good about this. Um, Week then, seventeen, they've got. Hold on, they got the Jets. Then they've got uh, at Philadelphia and Jacksonville. <laughs> They're gonna win out. Oh Lord! The Patriots don't win out. They're getting the four seed. You know, when we did our preview before the season, I actually had the Texans going eleven and five. You remember that? No, I don't remember. As, that. Yeah, but I also, feel like you're making that up right now. Also, no, I also had the Titans going eleven and five. Though, so. I feel like you're making that up right now. Why, <laughs> what what division am I missing? The AFC North. No, oh, that's the C- AFC North is the uh, uh, the, the winner. Ravens. Okay, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. The Patriots won't have the four seed. the The AFC North winner is going to have the four seed. Yeah, so, I mean, even if the Steelers win this game, I don't think that they catch the Pats. No, right? Okay. No, Pats are nine and four. Steelers seven and five. Well, seven five and one. Yeah. Uh, Houston nine and four. 
and Kansas City and the Chargers eleven and two and ten and three. Okay, I feel so, I feel much better. Yeah, because yeah. the Patriots still have the Jets and the Bills. I think to finish the season, and so yeah, I, I feel like if they lose this game, they win the next two. They're they're still going to be. Okay. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And we're still playing um, on wild card Sunday. I uh, I think the Pats win this game. I don't think that the Texans uh, uh, jump them in the standings. I think. Hope you're right. I think the Pats will be fine. Uh, game number three, the Cowboys at the Colts. This is actually a really fun. I'm, I'm yeah. excited for this game because Andrew Luck looks good and the Cowboys are just doing weird shit that I can't explain. The Colts, a three-point favorite at Sunday noon on Fox. I would imagine there's going to be a lot of people watching this game. Oh, no, yeah. Um, Cowboys, I mean, they've won five straight. They're they're five and one since they got Amari Cooper. The Colts can't really stop good offenses. I don't know that the Cowboys are a good offense, but they got playmakers. Anyway, Jerry Jones sold his soul to the devil. I think it's entirely possible. Um, but I, I think that had he... I think he would have done that a long time ago. Well, I wonder, is he that good of a deal maker that he got it back somehow? And then sold and then, it again. And then sold it again. That's he was possible. like, I didn't mean to get rid of Jimmy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's make another deal. We're making a new deal. New deal. A new deal. And, and, let, me, let, me and have, gonna, let me have Cooper. And I'm gonna, well, I don't know that it's Cooper. I, Cooper. I think it's, I think it's, I'm going to make a deal, and I need, to, I need to make this work for me. I'm going to die soon. Let me let me just get this W and I'm out of here. If the Cowboys win this game, your uh, under ticket is dead, isn't it? They have to lose out for me to, which they're not going to because they get Tampa Bay in a couple of weeks, and that's gonna I'm gonna lose that one. Yeah, I did go through all my tickets. Other than the Cowboys and the Vikings tickets, out of the eight tickets I bought, I think I'm cashing the rest. The Bills have to win out. The Browns only have to win one more. Uh, the, the Browns have to lose out for me to lose that game, lose that ticket. The Bills have to win out for me to lose that one. And I think all the rest of them I've already hit. The other, Dang, the other, you had eight. I had eight. And I, the other four I've already hit. And you put some, I know. No, put no, some no. money down this, on them. This will be the most profitable year I've ever had betting in, in the NFL preseason um like total wins not preseason games and then betting spreads this this will be the absolute most profitable you have uh you've done really well so really well this year um game uh, I, I, what, what are you leaning here this in your uh, this is in your game and what now what game the colts the colts uh, cowboys oh yeah, yeah this is absolutely my gambling picks and there's no logic to it there's none whatsoever it's now it's just out of spite i've bet against the cowboys five straight weeks i've lost all five weeks and and some of them they've they've beat the other team's ass. They just they just whipped the Saints ass. Like that that's part of it. And I'm okay. I'll, I'll take that loss. The loss last week that's that's complete horseshit. And and I'm not taking it. That's just not right. It's not okay. What a, and it's what not going to keep happening. What was your quote? Like you're going to fade. I'm fading Jason Garrett until yeah, just, fading Jason fading yeah. Jason Garrett's ass until they or no until they fading fire. Jason Garrett until they fire his ass. Yeah, that was it. That's, That's it. It. I said that like week two, <laughs> and I made a lot of money early in the season, and now it's just out yeah. of spite. Now it's now it's gotten a little bit ridiculous. Game number four. Let's uh, let's try and roll through these. Uh, they get less interesting the further we go. Dolphins at the Vikings. Vikings a seven point favorite. Dolphins had a huge win last week. The Vikings had a uh, Big loss on Monday Night Football. The Vikings fired their offensive coordinator. It's Sunday noon on CBS. I would imagine things will probably flip here. I was surprised the Vikings were a seven-point favorite, but the Dolphins have been garbage on the road. That, so this is and this is actually in my gambling picks, but I'll give the logic here to, for, for, for people to understand. I think this the spread is a classic case of overreaction Sunday. Okay, The, the Dolphins beat the vaunted Patriots and and they beat them in glorious fashion and the Vikings got the hell beat out of them on national TV both of those games everybody knows everybody saw and so immediately the seven point spread everyone's just they have to be piling on the Dolphins yeah I, I think that is overreaction that is dumb go the other way this yes. is I I can't tell you a lot of things I like about the Vikings other than the fact that they're playing at home against a team that doesn't play well on the road. 
the right play is you just take the Vikings and you just kind of close your eyes and, and hope it works out. Yeah, I agree. Uh, game number five, Saints minus six and a half at the Panthers. Uh, the Panthers have lost five, five straight. Is this five straight? Yeah, five God, straight. Dog. Um, and, and while they have looked better at home, they have still been losing at home. So That offensive line's not good. No, well, and just the the play calling just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. So Cam's not accurate. And here's what's really sad about the the Panthers team: Christian McCaffrey's having an incredible season. Oh, absolutely. Well, and this it is, is an interesting stat here. Right? It is so, going to go kind of swept under the rug. This is so. This is the Monday Night Football game, seven fifteen p.m. on ESPN. Uh, the Panthers last week in their loss to what the Browns lost to Cleveland. Um, the Panthers with that's, that's three with, out of the last four, by the way. With Cam and McCaffrey, mm-hmm. both of them combined were it had eighty six percent success rate running the football. Oh yeah, and so and for those that don't understand, it's uh, you get a certain amount of yardage on first down, a certain amount of yardage when there's however much left for the you know. Yeah, there's a, there's an algorithm figured yes. out to what's successful but, running, but and what's 86%, not. eighty six percent, and they get. I mean, they're down twenty six to twenty. Late in the ball game, and I mean they they move the ball all the way down the field using McCaffrey running the football, using Cam running the football, and they get down to like the three yard line, and not once do they give it to McCaffrey or let Cam run the football. They and there's still plenty of time left. It's not like yeah. they had to throw the football, but Norv Turner is calling passes for. Cam Newton. And when you get down that tight and the coverage gets that close because you don't have but seven to ten yards to actually defend, yeah, then you have to be an amazingly accurate quarterback. And Cam, Cam is, is far Cam from is that. Cam is not that. He is a freak athlete with a cannon, but he's never going to make that needle in a haystack throw, that, that thread the ball through the needle. I, well, and, and, you've got, and you've got Cam stuff, and yeah. McCaffrey that are both great in space, yes. and you can spread a it, defense if enough. If you're going to throw it, you need to, to dump, you need to, to run some type of out little screen pass or something to McCaffrey because he is great in space, even though it's all tight right there. McCaffrey is averaging 100 yards rushing, 100 yards receiving almost every game. Yeah. Like, that, like that's incredible. We averaging like two touchdowns Yeah, a game. We, we haven't seen a guy do this that well for a team that's playing this bad in a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's strange. And then the defense. I, I think Ron Rivera has probably punched his ticket. I think so, too. I mean, we'll, we'll I mean, see. if he beats the Saints and he wins out and he makes a wild card spot, then maybe we're having a different conversation. But, but it, it and don't I think look this like, team, I think this team has the talent to do that. But yeah, I, but it doesn't look like the it doesn't look like they've got the the horses to be able to do that right now. Do we think the Saints offense figures it out? Do they get right in this game? Because I think they got right in the last game. Mm, I don't know if they um, got right. I mean, they had well, a I mean, punt remember, return and and a punt block. Like they like they scored on some fluky stuff. This wasn't their offense just scoring now. Oh no, I'm I'm with you. But I'm with you. One thing but that's they looked up. better, and they were moving the football more. They like okay, yeah, they looked better, and I think they got it figured out in the second half last week. I think they come out because divisional game, uh, it's in Carolina. I think they absolutely like just swing that that thing. So so here's the one thing that you gotta love if you're Drew Brees. You're in this tight MVP race right now. There is nothing better than the Panthers secondary. To get you just looking good. Yep. Which is why I was amazed that this was uh, six and a half points. Which well, I mean, still it seems a, like a lot. It's, it's a divisional It's game. a divisional road dog. I mean, that a road yeah. fa- like that's that's tough, man. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, let's jump through the honorable mentions real quick. We got four of them. Let's roll. Sunday night football. Eagles at the Rams. Rams are now an eleven and a half point favorite. At the line opened at eight. Uh, Wentz. It, it was announced that he may be done for the season. So immediately it's Nick Foles. If you don't think you can win the division, you immediately go to Foles. Yeah, uh, and I like think that's, that's the what right they're move, doing. right? Um, so now the Rams from eight points are now up to eleven and a half. Seems like a lot of points, but uh, but we've also seen the Eagles just get blasted. Correct. So you know we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm surprised that uh, NBC did not flex out of this one and, and take something a little more interesting. Oh no, you you don't flex out of the Rams right now. You got an opportunity to have the Rams. You don't care who they're playing. Okay. Uh, Titans at the Giants. Giants minus two and a half of coin flip game, kind of Sunday noon on CBS. Titans really need to win out. 
No, the Titans got to win out. They want the wild card spot. Yeah. Um, Giants have looked really well. Yeah, they, the Giants have been playing really good football. I mean, remember they they opened up what one and seven. Yeah, and now they're five and eight. So I mean, they beat the Bears a couple weeks ago. Like this is a good football team. Saquon looks pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, they've uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they put forty on uh, on Washington last week. And I think that probably might be why. Uh, they've got the Giants as a favorite here at home, um, but it could also be that like we don't know what the Titans are. But like, I they, they looked really you, good last you're not week. Putting, but listen, I've been wrong about a lot of things. I've made some definitive statements and just been flat out wrong. You're not putting forty on this Titans team. No, that's not happening. I just, I just don't think that's going to happen. No, I, I agree with you. Uh, Packers at the Bears. Bears are currently a six point favorite. Sunday noon on Fox is at Soldier Field. Uh, the Bears big win over the Rams last week. Packers uh, got a huge win in their first game since they fired uh, Mike McCarthy. Joe Fieldman. Um, I don't know <laughs> that the Packers have what it takes to beat the Bears this go round. The Bears are probably still pissed about that Week One loss. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. I think they will be looking to uh, hand it to the Packers. Uh, and then finally, the Browns at the Broncos. Broncos minus three. This is Saturday night, seven twenty p.m. on the NFL Network. It's at Mile High Stadium. Browns coming off a big win against. Uh, Against the Panthers, Broncos coming off of a devastating loss at the 49ers made no sense whatsoever. Uh, but Emmanuel Sanders is out, so you know that that might have hurt that offense last week. They didn't know what to do without him. Uh, this is in my game book picks, so ah. we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with that. Um, so that is our NFL previews for Week 15. Remember to go over and check out the NFL gambling picks uh, episode. Go to tunicatravel.com for more information on all six of their sports books and head over to winningcureseverything.com to find out more about us. 